This video aims to provide a brief guide to binary search trees, exploring what they are and how they are implemented. Binary search trees, or BSTs, are data structures that support fairly fast search, insertion, and deletion, in addition to maximum, minimum, successor, and predecessor operations. Binary search trees have emerged through a collection of contributions from various individuals. An unpublished memo in 1952 from military cryptanalyst Arnold Doomey outlined an early sketch for binary search tree insertion. This was followed by further designs from David Wheeler and by Conway Berners-Lee as part of what he described rather wonderfully as a monkey puzzle tree. In 1960, Peter Windley published a fuller description for insertion, including delightful metaphors for operations such as picking the data off the tree and also describing the role of the tree in sorting. At the same time, Andrew Booth and Andrew Collin considered a binary search tree-like structure and noted that taking account of which items were popular could improve retrieval time. Finally, and independently, in 1962, Thomas Hibbard also considered the data structure, introducing the name binary search tree and providing an algorithm for item deletion. Typically, binary search tree operations are fairly fast. The average case complexity of searching, insertion, and deletion is logarithmic in the number of stored items. However, as with other data structures like hash tables, a naive binary search tree has worse case complexity that is linear in n. An alternative way to view these statements is to note that search, insertion, and deletion is linear in the height of the binary search tree. Nicely balanced trees will have good behavior because their height grows logarithmically in n, but unbalanced trees have a height that grows linearly in n. With regards to storage, the cost is linear in the number of nodes in the tree. Their average case performance and flexibility means that binary search trees can be a good choice for several abstract data types such as set, map, and priority queue. Let's now look at an example of a binary search tree. Here, nodes are drawn as circles with their keys shown as the values inside. The essential characteristic of binary search trees is that they satisfy what's referred to as the binary search tree property. For each node u in the tree, any node L in its left subtree has a key that is less than or equal to U's key, and any node R in its right subtree has a key that is greater than or equal to U's key. For example, starting from the root node with key 3, we can see that all nodes in its left subtree are less than or equal to 3, while all nodes in its right subtree are greater than or equal to 3. We can also pick another node, like this one, with a key of 5. We see that 4 is less than 5, and thus on the left, 6 is greater than 5, and thus on the right. To implement the binary search tree, we typically make use of a collection of nodes, each of which holds a reference to its parent, left child, and right child. Given the same keys as before, we link them using their parent attributes, left child attributes, and right child attributes. We also use a special binary search tree object that has a root attribute pointing to the root of the tree. Any unused references are set to none. One last note. Our definition of the binary search tree follows Corman et al. and allows for keys to appear multiple times. Unlike arrays, where the order for processing elements is fairly obvious, with trees, there are many reasonable ways to process the elements. For this purpose, a number of traversal algorithms have been designed, which process each node in the tree exactly once in a particular ordering. The simplest traversals adopt depth-first search, in which the algorithm visits nodes by first going deeper rather than broader though breadth-first search is certainly possible. The three most common depth-first traversal orderings are known as in-order traversal, pre-order traversal, and post-order traversal. The in-order traversal works by processing each node in between visiting its left subtree and its right subtree. It's an algorithm that is simplest to implement recursively, which we can do in Python as follows. We define a function that takes in a node, u. If the node is not none, we recurse into its left subtree. We then process the node in some way, here we are choosing to print its key. Then finally, we recurse into the right node. Let's see how this looks in practice by performing an in-order traversal of a binary search tree, using the same example as before. We'll print out the nodes as we traverse. Starting from the root node, we check it is not none, then we recurse into its left subtree. This too is not none, and also has a left subtree, so we recurse into that. This node is not none but its left child is none, so this function call will do nothing. We then print the key. Its right child is none, so this function will do nothing. Then we unwind back up to its parent. We print its key, 
and since it has no right child, this call will do nothing, and so we unwind back up to its parent. We print its key, and recurse into its right child. This node has a left subtree, so we recurse into it, print its key, and unwind back up to its parent. We print its key, then recurse into its right child, which has no left key, so we print its key. It has no right child, so we unwind back up, and we are done. Note that because this was a binary search tree, in order traversal printed the keys in ascending order. Pre-order traversal is closely related. As before, we start with a check that the node is not none. This time, however, we process the node by first printing its key, then we recurse into its left child, and then its right child. If we re-execute the traversal, we see that we still visit the nodes in depth first order, but because we are processing the key before recursing, the printout is different. Finally, a post-order implementation also follows a similar structure, starting with a check that the node is not none. This time, we call post-order on the left child, then on the right child, then finally process the node itself. Again, the traversal will visit nodes in depth first order, but will print the keys in a different order to either in-order or pre-order traversal. These traversals are big theta of n complexity. You can see that they call themselves exactly twice at each node, once on the left child and once on the right child. We now turn to queries on binary search trees, starting with finding the minimum and maximum value in the data structure. As before, we'll use a simple binary search tree as an example. To compute the minimum in the subtree of node u, we check if u has a left child, and if it does, we move to the left child. Once there is no longer a left child to move to, we return to the current node. For example, suppose we call the min function on the root node. Since it has a left child, we move down the tree to the left. This too has a left child, so we move down again. This node has no left child, so we return it, providing the node with key 1. Finding the max is symmetric. While the node has a right child, we move down to it. When the while loop is done, we return the node. If we call this with the root of the tree as the argument, we first check that it has a right child. It does, so we move down to the right. We do the check again, find another right child, and move down. This time, we find no right child, so we break out and return the node with key 9. We'll now consider searching for a given key in the subtree of a node, u. While the node is not none, and the key doesn't match, we compare the query key to that of the current node. If it's less, we move to the left child, else we move to the right child. When the while loop exits, we return the node. Calling this function on the root node with a query key of 6 will head down the tree until it finds the relevant node and return it. Calling the search function on the root node with a query key of 7 will head down the same path of the tree to reach the same node as the search for 6, then move on to the right child of this node, which is none so none is returned. The complexity of the minimum, maximum, and search operations is big O of h, where h is the height of the tree. We'll now look at the operation of finding the in-order predecessor of a node. This is the element that appears immediately before the given node in the in-order traversal order. Note that no key comparisons are required to find the predecessor, since it relies only on the structure of the tree. To find the predecessor of a given node, there are two cases to be handled. First, if the node has a left subtree, then we simply find the node of maximum value in the left subtree. If not, then we have to do something slightly more complicated. We head up the tree until we have taken a step in our path that points to the left rather than to the right. To go up the tree, we define par to be the parent of the current node. Then, while the parent is not none and the current node is not the right child, we update the node to its parent and do the same for the parent. When we break, we return the parent. Let's walk through some predecessor examples to make this concrete, starting with the first case. Suppose we want to find the predecessor of the node with key 3. We check if it has a left subtree. It does, so we run the max function on this left subtree, which returns the node with key 2. Simple. For the second case, suppose we want to find the predecessor of the node with key 6. We first check for a left subtree, which does not exist, so we jump to the else statement. We create our parent variable, which points to the parent node. 
We then check that the parent exists, which it does, and whether the path from node to parent points to the right. Since it does, we update the node to the parent and update the parent to its parent. We check again that the parent exists and whether the path points to the right. It does not, it points to the left. So we break out of the loop and return the parent as the predecessor, corresponding to the node with key three. The inorder successor function is symmetric to the predecessor function, so we won't step through it in detail. As with minimum, maximum, and search, since we are only going down the tree in case one, or only going up the tree in case two, the complexity is also big O of H, the height of the tree. We next come to the topic of insertion, and in particular, how to insert a new node into a binary search tree. The insert function takes two arguments, the binary search tree itself and the node V to be inserted. We define a variable U to point at the root of the tree and initialize a par variable to track its parent. We then use a while loop to descend down the tree, at each step assigning par to U and then updating U to point at its left child if V should be to its left and otherwise to its right child. Once we've gone off the end of a leaf at the bottom of the tree, and u has become none. Par will point to a leaf node, and we assign v's parent to this leaf node. We then handle the edge case where par is none, which implies that the binary search tree was empty, and simply set v to be the root. Else, if v's key is smaller than the leaf node, we insert it as the left child, otherwise we insert it as the right child. As before, we will illustrate the algorithm on a simple binary search tree. We'll suppose that the node to be inserted is a node with a key of seven. When calling the function, we first assign u to root and initialize par to be none. Then, since u is not none, we update par to u, and since v's key 7 is greater than or equal to u's key of 3, we move u to its right child. We head further down the tree, first checking that u is not none, updating par to u, and this time, since v's key is less than u's key 8, we update u to its left child. We again check u is not none, update par to u, check v's key against u's, and move u to its right child, which is none. Since u is now none, we break out of the while loop and attach v to par via its parent attribute. We check the edge case to ensure that the tree was not empty, check if v's key is less than par's key, which it isn't, so we reach the else statement and attach v as par's right child. Note that as with the previous operations, the complexity is again big O of h, where h is the height of the tree, since we only ever move downwards. Also recall that, as mentioned earlier, we are following the Corman et al. definition of binary search trees, which allow duplicate keys. If duplicate keys are not allowed, then the insert function must be modified such that nodes are updated when a key matches that of an existing node. We now come to the final operation, deletion of a node from a binary search tree. Deletion is a little more intricate than insertion. There are four cases to consider, so we'll first step through the logic before looking at the code. Recall that any operation we perform, including deletion, must also preserve the binary search tree property. In the following, we'll focus on deleting the node that has key 2. Case 1, the case where the node to be deleted has no right child, looks like this. To delete the pink target node, we simply remove it and replace it with its left child. Case 2 is similar, where the pink node to be deleted has no left child. We remove it and then replace it with its right child. Now we get to a slightly tricky part. In case three, the pink node to be deleted has two children. In the first such scenario we'll consider, the successor of the node to be deleted is its right child, highlighted in blue. Note that this node cannot have a left child, otherwise it wouldn't be the target node's successor. We remove the target node, then shift the successor node and its subtree into place. Finally, case four. The target pink node has two children, but its successor is not its right child. We first replace the successor by its right child. Note again that the blue node can't have a left child, otherwise it wouldn't be the pink node's successor. Then we remove the target node and replace it by the successor. Now that we've seen the logic, we turn to the deletion implementation and the task of deleting a given node u from a binary search tree. Our function takes two arguments, the binary search tree and the node to delete. For the first case we looked at, the target node has no right child so we shift the nodes by replacing the target node with its left child. Here, we make use of a helper function, which takes in three arguments, the binary search tree, the old node that will be replaced, and the source node that will replace it. I could call this last argument new rather than source, but I am loath to use Python keywords as arguments. 
if the old node has no parent, then it was the root, so we update the root to point at source. If the old node was a left child, we update its parent's left child to source. Otherwise, it was a right child, and we update its parent's right child to source. Finally, provided that the source node was not none, we update its parent to the old node's parent. We'll illustrate on a simple binary search tree, where our function call requests that the old node with key 2 is replaced by the source node with key 1. We first check if the old node has a parent, indicating that it was not the root. It does have a parent, so we next check if it was a left child. It is, so we move source up to replace it. Finally, we check that source is a node rather than none, and since it is, we update its parent attribute to point at the old node's parent. Returning to our delete function, we consider the second case, where the target node has no left child, and apply the same logic to shift its right child up. Now we come to the scenario in which U has two children. Our first task is to find U's successor, which we can do with our minimum function, introduced earlier. We begin by handling the slightly more complicated case where U's successor is not its right child. In this case, we replace U's successor with its right child. Then, we use two lines to reattach U's right child as the successor's right child. Finally, we handle the logic that's common to any setting in which U had two children by shifting the successor into U's place. Then, we again use two lines of code to assign U's left child as the left child of the successor. And we are done. We'll close by noting that, as with other operations we've looked at, the complexity of the deletion is big O of H, where H is the height of the tree. In the video description, you can find links to Python code to implement binary search trees, slides, and references. I hope you have a wonderful day.